Hey guys, welcome to AMA 10. Uh, in this video, I'm going to answer a few questions, basically discuss some of the detail and equipment that I use, starting with some of the really important affordable ones. So I'll obviously I'll cover a pressure washer because you just need one of those and I'll cover an air compressor. I've said this so many times before. This is uh, perhaps I haven't put it uh, direct enough. An air compressor is an absolute must have. Even a small used $50 one, you've got to have an air compressor. You can't do proper detailing without compressed air in my opinion. So I'll, I'll get right into it. We uh, I'm, I'm currently using a $250 air compressor. At least I think it's worth uh, roughly that because I forgot what I paid for it. This is a... I, describe as a consumer unit it's branded ryobi and it's uh it is actually very decent very very good i'm, I'm impressed uh, i didn't expect it to be this good um so if you're after one i have used this one here professionally day in day out for a few months now no issues uh this has a two horsepower motor probably maybe i reckon a little lot mystic um, and it has a 50 liter tank um both of those specs are okay uh, so if you're going to buy this for home detailing this is more than enough in my opinion especially if you're only going to be using it once a week if you're a professional detailer like me i've um, i've been using this this is kind of an interim thing at the last workshop we had a more serious air compressor and i just needed something um, that i could put in the car that i could lift this is about 70 kilos or something maybe less um, i could lift this up easily put it in the car take it out of the car etc uh, mobile jobs and things um, to get me uh, between uh, the old workshop and the new workshop now that i'm almost finished with the new workshop i'm going to get myself something a little more serious but as i said really impressive little unit it, it, it's it's what i use now i don't have anything better than that and i'm getting the jobs done it has enough pressure so it'll put out around 100 psi it kind of fluctuates the regulator is not the best um yeah, but that's that's fine uh, especially for enthusiast detailing or even low level professional detailing uh, the tank is a little small um so i find that the because the tank is small it's not holding much um it is not vast reserves that it can draw from and because i'm doing things like drying a car um, with this so i've constantly got a blower going and it's constantly evacuating air from the receiver the motor then has to replace that air and because the motor is only two horsepower at, at best it's not doing it's not able to, to well, it actually, it is keeping up, um, but it's running flat out. So you've got this thing just running constantly, um, which is when you've got it next to you, which I do, um, is a bit uh, annoying. And um, it's been a month or two now that I've been working in my home garage. And even though it's comp very, very well um, sealed and insulated for noise, um, I still think that my neighbors might be able to hear it. And it's, uh, it's about an hour a day, maybe, maybe two hours a day, um, of brrr, just this, this, the, the most annoying, um, drone con constant drone. Uh, that's because it's a direct drive, um, belt driven ones are a little bit quieter and then you can get silent ones, which are not even close to silent, but very, very quiet if you get the good ones, um, there's silent and then there's silent air compressors. They're not all the same. You have to actually run them under load and measure them uh, from the same distance with the same device. So you can kind of get a, a, a good understanding of which ones, uh, uh going to be appropriate for you. If you can, um, be, if you've got it in the same room and if you can afford it, try not to buy a direct drive unit, try and get a belt driven unit or even better, a, a silent unit. They do cost a bit, a lot more actually. Um, they are, if I remember correctly, I was told by someone they are more reliable. I've never killed an air compressor. Um, and I had, back in the day, I had crappy used ones and ran them flat out and they still didn't die. I maintain all the stuff that I have very, very well. And I find if you get a good quality unit um, and you... Uh, roughly in the ballpark, so you're not you're not overdriving it, overusing it, um, which I am doing now to the Ryobi, uh, and you maintain it really well. Um, it it should last years. So for enthusiasts, because I'm asked this question all the time, a two horsepower motor with a 50 liter tank is more than enough even for drying the car, even when you're flat out drying the car, you'll need to switch it on, have it charge the tank, have it fill the tank um, for just a minute or two. A 50 liter tank will take about two minutes to to fill um, with a two horsepower motor and usually you won't find a receiver that's 50 liters with anything 
a smaller or larger than two horsepower be roughly there there are instances where and applications where you'll need a bigger motor and a smaller receiver or the other way around um, but most prosumer or consumer sorry uh, air compressors that you will find will be uh, with a 50 litre tank will have a roughly two horsepower motor that's more than enough for doing all the detailing jobs now, I so see that consumer unit would run for about $250, and uh, the silent versions, silent versions of those, the much, much quieter versions of those, will run you about almost double that. It's about $400, $450, $500-ish uh, uh, for the same spec. So a one and a half to two horsepower motor, a roughly 50 litre tank in a much quieter version will be almost double what the, um, the direct drive unit will be. Up from there, I find you get uh, to around the $900 to $1,000 mark. Um, and the unit that we had at the last place, because it was far away and it was actually in an area that was we can control the, uh, the noise, we went for a belt-driven unit. It was more than quiet enough. Uh, it had a 120-litre tank or 150, somewhere between 120 and 150-litre tank, which is more than enough. And it had a 3 to 3.5 three horsepower motor. That was a vertical unit, which I prefer. It's hard to get the specs that I want in a vertical unit unit they're almost always horizontal I don't know why I like the vertical units because they uh, they take up less real estate the footprint is smaller I also find not that we would we would be moving them much but I find moving a vertical unit much much easier uh, and I find the bung on the bottom uh, of the receiver to uh, for maintenance to release uh, I don't know if you know this but Every now and then you'll have to release water from the tank, which is created by the compressed air in it. Um, and you just simply do that by removing, um, unscrewing a valve, allowing the water to be uh, expelled. You should capture it or at least clean up. It'll be slightly rusty. And then um, screw in that unit, uh, that uh, the valve. I find that it's on a vertical unit. It's on the very, very bottom of the receiver. So you can more efficiently expel that and not much air from the receiver is expelled either. Um, after you've done that and you've closed up the valve, you still got a lot of that air that you, that you had. So you can go back within a few seconds, you're back to using, uh, air and that maintenance is only going to be done. I do, I used to do it once a week. Um, and there's almost no downtime. Um, so if you can find a vertical unit and if you think it might suit your situation, if you're unaware that those existed have a look at them uh, they're good what am i what i'm going to upgrade to because i use compressed air every day um, is a silent uh, air compressor it's going to be stored away from my workshop and have line running to it and uh, the reason for that is so i can't hear the unit working at all it'll be somewhere between three and five horsepower i reckon about the three and a half horsepower mark because that's ample and it'll have a tank somewhere between 100 and 300 liters i reckon around 150 to 180 liter mark for me is ample again so a three and a half horsepower motor with a 120 liter tank means that it won't take long for the the tank the receiver to be filled and uh, and get going uh, not an issue for me because I usually I make sure that all my lines are completely sealed and have no leaks and I leave the unit on um, 24 7 so it's always uh, ready to go um, so when I grab that um, blower for instance and I'm expelling air constantly for 15 to 20 minutes sometimes up to 45 minutes to have a car bone dry after a wash to completely remove all that rinse water I'm never going to be emptying the tank and I'm never going to be to, to have a compressor motor that's going to struggle to keep up supplying that air. Now, most manufacturers will state um, airflow, or air generation, in CFM or in another, a few other metrics. And I find some of them are pushing the boundaries that the, the maximum amount that it can generate. It might be able to do that when it's brand new and... Uh, if there are uh, no issues with the unit at all, has no wear and tear, um, and it's working from cold, but once the, the motor gets a little hot, uh, or the, the ambient temperature is a little warm, and the unit's a few years old, you won't you won't achieve that um, that kind of uh, efficiency from the unit. It'll decrease just a little bit depending on ambient temperature, your maintenance, etc. Now, I should, probably should have put this at the, the start of the uh, conversation, uh, but why uh, is an air compressor so important um, and why did I 
recommend that you have one by default. Um, it's one of the first tools that you should get. Uh, I, I find bone drying a car um, after you're done with the wash to be incredibly important. Trying to do paint correction and having water drip out of mirrors and things is just not the way to go. Um, the air dryers, the blowers, they just don't put out enough pressure to dislodge the water from the places that it has to be removed from, uh, that it's going to drip from. You'll spend a lot more time and you'll blow around a lot more dust. It's not as concentrated. You're not, you're not putting the air exactly where you want it. Um, you don't have anywhere near the pressure. And that blower generally can't be used for much else, whereas the air compressor has a whole bunch of other uses. So you're buying this one tool for a whole bunch of things, including vacuuming. We've been over this before, so you can go back to our video where we use a Venturi device that uh, turns compressed air into a small vacuum, uh, which most people might be able to use to maintain their vehicles. If, you, if you're if you an enthusiast or you're not doing any professional detailing at all and you're simply just vacuuming your car once a week, you might be able to get away with, depending on uh, how you use your vehicle, you might be able to get away with vacuum it with your air compressor. Uh, or don't forget that you can use it for pumping up tyres and uh, checking and adjusting tyre pressures. And uh, probably most important is uh, cleaning interiors. I, I can't clean an interior properly without an air compressor. At least I can't do it anywhere near as efficiently without an air compressor. All right, I think that's enough chatter about uh, air compressors, but if you uh, need to know more about air compressor, all the tools um, that we use or recommend, um, leave a comment and I might answer it in another video or reply to your comment. Next is pressure washer. Uh, every week without fail, at least a couple of questions about pressure washers, which is expected. Um, we've used everything and we recommend, we have recommended in the past and I still recommend that if you're going to buy a decent um, consumer or prosumer, however you want to call it, pressure washer, um, that you head over to your local hardware store or wherever you prefer to buy this tool from, and you buy something in the $400 to $500 range. Um, I think spending that kind of money generally gets you a unit that's going to be good and last for a long time, provided you take care of it. Anything that's significantly cheaper than four or $500, anything around the $100 mark, I find is just completely useless. They usually have pathetic little pumps that make high pressures but um, put out way too little volume. Uh, they have these crappy little cords that, that like to uh, curl and flip around and frustrate the, the hell out of me. Every time I've helped a friend wash his car and he's had a $100 uh, unit, it, it frustrates me so much I, I, I almost want to use a garden hose instead. And in the long run, I find that you'll be spending more money. Everyone I know that has bought a $100 to $150 unit has ended up replacing it in a year or two, just a year or two. Uh, that's m most people that I know that have done that, who are washing their car once a week, not professional detailing. Uh, it frustrates them to use it because it's cumbersome and, and, and just annoying. Uh, it has usually way too much pressure. Most pressure washers have far too much pressure, uh, but not enough volume so that it, it's slow to do the job, which uh, on a really warm day can be an issue. You really want to get um, soap off and things. You want to do the job as fast as possible. Uh, you need volume, not pressure. And in the long run, you're just spending more money having these cheaper units because you have to replace them every couple of years instead of spending four to $500 and getting a unit that's going to last you at least 10 we still have the, is it Bosch or, or Gurney? I'll, I'll put a link down to what it was. I think it was a Gurney. Uh, I know the model was a Super 145, which I re recommended 15 years ago after we had bought and had this unit for a couple of years. We've still got that unit. It still works and it was used professionally uh, from time to time. We found a main unit was down or, or we just wanted uh, a small unit off to the side or we wanted to wash two cars at once. Someone was using the spit water or whatever other gurney we had. Um, this uh, Super 145 was being used. It, it, it's uh, I've had little bits and pieces replaced. A lot of done a lot of O-ring. Uh, which are cheap and quick and easy to do and I think we drove over a cord once and drove over a lance once so we had to replace those uh, but otherwise very very good unit may have cost all of 600 to 650 dollars for 15 plus years use and still working now I still use it at home every now and then uh, so I couldn't recommend if that unit still exists I'd recommend a I think it was a gurney brand super 145 or something similarly specced from the same or uh, manufacturer, uh, that would be good. That's my recommendation around the $500 mark. Up from there, around a $1,000 mark, if you wanted to spend $1,000 and 
even if I wasn't a professional detailer, I might spend almost $1,000 on a really good pressure unit. Uh, you're still going to be in cold water territory, no hot water yet, um, but you can get something for around $1,000. You can buy a very slightly used or perhaps you might be able to do a deal or just just over um, just, just over $1,000. You might be able to do a deal with a decent company such as Spitwater. Um, I know... I don't have any affiliation with Spitwater. I just like their products. Uh, they've been made in Australia. They've got great um, service. If your, your product ever breaks, they usually come out fairly quickly to to fix it. They've got parts on hand, so you can um, you get parts, get a hold of parts quickly, so you can get back up and running quickly. Uh, we had a cold water unit, which is an HP 110 or HD 110, something like that. Um, I think that was about $2,000, but uh, you can find them readily for $1,000 slightly used um, and units that are similar to that. Now, these run, uh, e they were running into pumps um, when I purchased our last unit. It's an Italian pump, um, all metal, uh, mostly brass and uh, amazing units, just, just absolutely bulletproof. You would find as an enthusiast that this unit i seriously would would last probably 30 years with with some maintenance and the maintenance is minimal um, especially the cold water units the cold water is what cools the pump uh, so very simple doesn't need um, much to be done to it in, in terms of maintenance um, you just really roll it out wash your car roll it back or leave it in fixed in the unit ours at uh, at the last workshop in Campbellfield 40 production drive um, that was a Spitwater HD or HP 110 whatever that was um, we modified it very slightly but it was only the electronics so that we could start and stop it from inside the uh, the wash bay um, but the, the unit was standard that ran an Italian to pump and that we got about 15 to 18 years roughly use out of that i think we had it serviced a couple of times um, and it that's not because we were negligent it just didn't really need uh, any more servicing than that um, i hesitate to recommend a particular brand um, and I, I don't like to mention brands especially because especially I have no affiliation with them and I don't want other brands to think that I'm that I'm pushing customers towards one particular brand however that's the unit we just happened to buy and based on my 15 years of experience using that product every, and relying on that product every single day I can highly recommend it um, and I've spoken to hundreds of other detailers who have that same product, that Spitwater HD 110 or HP 110, whatever it's called, and they said the same thing. They say, look, it's not hot water, it might not be fancy, uh, and it was close to $2,000, which is a lot of money. However, the unit was absolutely bulletproof. Uh, you could dial down the... Um, the pressure to around six to eight hundred psi if i remember correctly it was somewhere around there which is a lot better than the 1500 2000 psi that the consumer units are putting out which is way too high great for cleaning concrete which is probably what they're designed for they're designed to do a bunch of uses around the house um, and cleaning concrete might be one of them and uh, so those high pressures would come in handy there we could dislodge things um, but they have very low volume very high pressure and detailers want things the other way around so you want four five six hundred psi at a minimum and 800 900 psi tops uh, but a lot of volume a lot of water um, still much less than what a garden hose would put out but uh, a lot more than what those consumer units would put out and that is a more a much more useful um pressure and level of volume for detailing it helps you to be more efficient up from there which is what i'm using in my small workshop now is uh which i recommend is a comet uh comet's an italian brand i think it's part of bar or the other way around i don't know um bar is another it italian brand that um in my experience has made very very good quality products uh, especially the the internals the, the pumps uh, just fantastic this one is uh, two and a half thousand dollars it's uh, very very compact uh, very easy to move around and it has a hot water option i don't use that often uh, but when i do it comes in very handy as you'd know getting water hot and i not 40 50 degrees but i'm talking 90 degrees uh, very very hot very useful uh, you can clean wheels without ever having to touch them with a brush or chemical sometimes um, uh, with just because of the the high pressure the high volume and the hot water mostly the, the it's the temperature doing the work uh, so very very handy if you can swing two and a half thousand dollars because you want the best at home can't recommend a, a comet uh, i think this one was branded a 
Patriot 150 or something like that. I'll put the exact uh, details um, in the video description. Um, it was about two and two and a half thousand dollars, and I think I've had people tell me they could get them for as low as two thousand dollars um and for that kind of money it might not be as robust as the spit water but i don't want to uh you know someone from bar might be upset with me uh, for saying that i just i feel like it might not be as robust as the spit water unit um but i know this unit pretty well i know that it is more than robust enough even um use uh, being used by a professional every day and it has the hot water option, which is so handy to have. One of the reasons why you might not want hot water is if you have to store this unit inside while you're using it. It does have an exhaust. It burns diesel um, and it throws out just, just a heap of <laughs> fumes. Um, you cannot have it anywhere near a, a garage type situation where those fumes are going to be held. Um, the unit has to be outdoors or at least vented somehow. Um, while you're using it as a hot water unit. Uh, if you can do that outside, um, for, for instance, say it's raining one day, um, you just give up the hot water uh, function and you, you can have the unit inside with you um, and use it as a normal cold water unit. But while you're burning diesel to create that hot water, it must be outside or the exhaust on the top of the unit must be vented. Apart from that, I don't see any downsides to this unit. Um, the the, the the pricing is, I think, pretty sharp considering the functionality and the reliability. It's very compact, very easy to move around. Parts and service should be, shouldn't be a problem. Um, I've never had to service it. I've um, never had to buy parts for it yet. However, I did buy it from, yeah, I'll, I'll give them a shout out. I bought it from Victoria Pumps in Campbellfield. And those guys, um, you can just drop the unit straight into them, physically drop the unit to them. And if it's something cheap and quick and easy, they might even do it on the spot for you. Um, and they've got parts uh, there. I don't think you should do some research on this, but I don't think that um, supply of parts are going to be an issue, which is why I bought the machine. I wouldn't have bought it if... Um, if I thought there was a chance it could um, crap out and I'm, I'd be out of luck um, getting parts or have to fly in parts from Italy. Um, I was pretty confident that this would be no issue. I do have a backup, um, which would be the uh, the cheap unit that I described earlier, the Super 145. Um, but I haven't had an issue with this ma with machine. It's just been bulletproof since I've had it. Um, and having something so compact um, with uh, the right amount of pressure, I haven't measured the pressure on this machine yet. I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere around the 900 PSI mark. Uh, volume is good. I haven't measured volume yet, but very, very good. You'll find it in a spec sheet. Um, reliable, ultra reliable, quiet, very quiet. While this unit is running a couple of meters from me and I've got isolating headphones on, I cannot hear it. Uh, which is excellent. Uh, it um, takes in um, cold water via mains pressure, which here in my location is very high, uh, but I have tested at another location with low mains pressure. I think it was about 60 psi or 50 psi, something which is very, very low. Not a lot of not a lot of water pressure at that location, and the unit worked fine. So no issues with the little Comet um, Ripper machine um, and uh, at the two to two and a half thousand dollar price point, that's what I'm going to recommend. Above that, and there is a, uh, a need for units above that, but then you're either a, a full-time car wash or you're uh, preparing cars at a dealer or something like that, and you're going for a ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollar $30,000 unit, and there really aren't any bad ones there except for, and I've got to mention it, except for the unit that we had, and people would remember this from our day back in around 2007, uh, when we set up um, our car wash in Brunswick, uh, we bought two Karsha HD, HD 100s or something like that. They were HD units, very expensive, $10,000 a pop, so $20,000 a unit. Uh, two brand new, the reason I did that, um, because one was enough, but I had one um, for redundancy as a backup. And guess what? Both of them failed. Uh, one failed. We switched to the the, the backup, and that failed also. And uh, Karcher were extremely poor um, coming out to service the unit. I would ring them and say, we're running a car wash, 100 cars a day. 
um, and we need one at least one unit uh, repaired up and running immediately. Um, that was on a Friday afternoon that I rang them and uh, they said we can make it there Monday morning. And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> well, this is, these are commercial units um, and we're running them at the lowest pressures they can be run at and we're run very, very easy. They're brand new and I bought two of them off you at full price. Um, I need you to come out immediately. The weekend is uh, very important. Uh, we ended up rolling out a spit water or something like that and having it by the wash bay it looked ridiculous um, but it did the job it did 100 cars a day um, and then uh, Kasha ended up servicing that unit I think on Monday uh, and it broke down the following Friday or something again and we had them out just just constantly um, based on that experience and it might be it might be an issue that I had there um, I was totally turned off the brand and I don't recommend anything from that particular brand ever um, because all my customers and friends that have had the cheap $100 consumer units and me who's had the, the big $10,000 units, I haven't had any reliability there. Um, so for that reason, I wouldn't recommend that particular brand. Um, take what I'm saying. I don't like, I'm not slandering a brand. I'm giving you my actual experience with them. Um, I don't recommend that brand for that reason. That was 2007, um, and those little units are very, very cheap units sold at the, the very, very bottom end of the range. Um, so they could be uh, unreliable and not and cumbersome to use because they're so cheap. And I'm betting that's the that's the case. No, there's no no real excuse for the the two ten thousand dollar units that we had, um, and not one but two of them, uh, installed by um, people who sell nothing but products from that brand. Um, uh, in, heavy installation costs as well. Those though they supplied, they installed, and and that what nothing, none of that was cheap. Um, so f for that reason, I think there's there's no excuses, and I just I just simply have no faith uh, to recommend. So if you find that I'm never recommending that brand, um, which a lot of customers have found in the past, I'd say oh maybe this brand or maybe that brand. Um, that's the reason. It's it, it's that it's that lack of um, uh, confidence that I have to recommend that particular brand. Uh, so I hope you know where that's a bit of backstory to, as to uh, where that's coming from. And that's it. Uh, we'll, I've covered air compressors and um, and pressure washers, which are two very, very important um, uh, tools, which I think you have to have by default if you're a serious enthusiast detailer or if you're a professional detailer at any level. You have to have an air compressor and you must have a pressure washer. You can't get away without having either one um, as a professional. And as a enthusiast, if you want to kick it up a notch, um, and if you don't have one, an air compressor, absolutely, and probably a better pressure washer. Any questions, never hesitate to ask because uh, I'll try my best to answer. And if I don't speak to you, have a Merry Christmas. Thank you.